Today I am here with a particularly interesting instrument, and I guess it's an instrument, it is musical, but it's not something that you actually play mechanically with your hands. It instead is a thing that plays automatically, very much like a wind-up music box. In fact, that's what this is. It's a music box, but a very, very elaborate and ornate one indeed. So this instrument comes from about the late 1800s, early 1900s, there about. There's not exact, there is a date somewhere in here, I'm not exactly sure where it is, but I believe it does come from the early 1900s or the very late 1800s. And as you can see, it's a very, very cool piece. It has been refinished and this wood is absolutely gorgeous. I love the color of it. It might be walnut. I'm not 100% sure. I think it could be. And on the top here, I really love the top of this instrument. First of all, it kind of curves along the top and the shape of it reminds me of like a pirate treasure chest, except obviously very, very pretty. And then on the top, we have this really cool square shaped pattern where the grain of the wood has been like book matched and then intersected in really cool ways. And I love like that color variation and then the way the grain meets at like these perfect right angles to make like a diamond shaped square with all the different like lines in it. It's really cool and I love that shape. It's really great. Now on the top as well as the sides of the instrument and as well as the top and sides of the table we have these really neat brass inlays. If you look at the top here you can see like on the top here that you if we, when you run your finger over it you cannot feel any kind of a difference whatsoever in texture or height. So these are brass inlays that have been um, laid into grooves in the wood and then very um, precisely filed down so that they match the height of the wood exactly. There's also little tiny mother of pearl inlays in the corners as well and they're very very interesting. They're kind of like little chunks of mother pearl, mother of pearl that have been kind of laid into that little I'm not sure what you'd call that shape. It's kind of like a very rounded cross shape or an X shape. But they've been laid in there and it's very pretty. If you look at the front of the music box here, you can see this ornate lock as well as more of the brass inlays and mother of pearl inlays. And also on the matching table, which I've been told is a very rare find since these are two separate pieces, they're not attached. We also have more awesome brass inlays and more mother of pearl inlays. Also on the drawers here, we have another lock, a much simpler design lock, but also more inlays. And these ones here have elegant curves in them as well where their drawer is. Now, what What's cool is, I said this is a music box, and it has rolls that have little tiny metal spikes on them, kind of like, you know, the little tiny music boxes you have. They have that little tiny roll with the nubs on it that plucks the little tines. That's kind of like this. And we have gigantic ornate scrolls that are inside here. It's a very heavy door. My gosh, that's heavy. Probably because of all of these in here. These are the rolls, or the, I guess they're called rolls, that go inside. As you can see, there's these little delicate uh, metal spines, they look like spines, I'm going to call them spines. They are uh, the little delicate metal spines that go on the, um, they pluck little mechanisms and pull little me mechanisms that activate the bells, the zither, as well as the organ sounds inside of this instrument, which is absolutely wild. And um, so yeah, the owner of the store gave me a little bit of a demonstration and uh, showed me what all the controls do and all the mechanisms do. So you'll see that clip in the video and a little bit of him explaining to me what this does, because this is a completely foreign instrument to me. Uh, I know very little about it, but now I know a little bit about it and uh, it's very cool. There's little, I, so, I assume these are the locking mechanisms that are controlled by the lock there. Very, very cool. So let me push this back in, it weighs a ton. So now let's open up this lid here and show you what the inside of this instrument looks like. It's absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite things. I mean, it's this, this shop has lots of cool things. These little posts here can lock, so I'm going to lock that one in place as well. And now you can see the inside of it. It's got this beautiful, um, all this beautiful metal work, and I love how shiny everything is. This has been restored. Of course, this wouldn't have lasted from 1900 in this perfect of a condition, but it has been restored, and all of the metal, I assume, has been retouched and polished, and everything is in, I believe, perfect working condition. It certainly seems to work very well. We have all of these mechanisms. These are the bells that get triggered by these little tiny uh, mallets, I suppose they're called. And uh, this is a little... Um, metal plaque there, very beautiful. On the top here, I'm going to close this lid for a minute. On the top here we can see kind of like, it reminds me of what you have on like a CD or a music album because it says like roll number one and then it has a list of songs and very elegant script that is very difficult to read but it is a very elegant script that has the song title, this is Ave Maria and then by Gunod. And uh, so I assume that's who wrote the song. So this is kind of like an album, 
on the CD, but it has the number one here is for the role, and then each number here is for the song because the role, each role can actually play six different songs, and there's five other roles in this drawer, and so then you have a very, very large selection of music that you can play. It has that elegant script that I talked about, a really cool drawing here, and then also um, title here as well. It says mandolin, bass. Flutes, celestial voices, because it has a little celesta sound in there. It has the bells. It has a mandolin sound, and bass. I assume perhaps means the zither. On the top here, it says George Baker and Company manufactures Geneva. So this instrument was made in Geneva, Switzerland, which kind of would make sense because we've got lots of gears and kind of like a clockwork action going on. And I believe Switzerland is known for making really good watches, so that is very fitting. If you notice here on this instrument, there's lots of exotic woods going on. This one here, I know, I'm pretty sure it's bird's eye maple, and it's not used much today, but it's a very, very beautiful wood. I have no idea what this wood here is. It's got these really cool dark splotches in it, and it's absolutely beautiful. The color reminds me of mahogany. I don't know if that's what it is, but it reminds me of mahogany. It's really, really awesome. If you look down here on this glass lid as well, you might have noticed that it's uh, rimmed with bird's eye maple again on the outline, which is absolutely beautiful. The frame of it is bird's eye maple. And if I lift this up again, I was noticing that there's some really cool wood on the inside here as well. Look at this like purple wood there. It just catches the light and uh, it's beautiful. I don't know what, maybe that's more mahogany or something. It's a beautiful purplish red color and I really love it. They really went to town with exotic woods and beautiful metalwork on this instrument. So now I'm going to show you a clip of the owner of the store uh, explaining to me what all the mechanisms do and all of the little controls and then you will get to hear this instrument in all of its beauty and it is really, really amazing. I hope you enjoy it. So here you go, let's roll that clip. Engage it or if you want the zither, you engage these combs huh. on top of the comb. Well, these are paper mm -hmm. devices on top of the combs for zither. So you just pull those up and push them down? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's, it's got, it's spring wound. There's a spring inside that barrel that drives it. The timing mechanism is much like a pocket watch. It's got a flywheel balanced with jewels. You can adjust the, the speed of it. That's the timing mechanism there. All right, this is all mechanical, it's all acoustic. There's no batteries, no power. And that's, this, this, was a, this was the affluent people had this in their homes as a form of entertainment. I can imagine, it's beautiful. So to play it, there's two little knobs over here. You pull right. the little switch for playback. This back. is to repeat the songs or to, or to have it change songs. And this is to change it here, you'll see this will designate which song it's playing, and according to the cylinder, you'll see the music up here. That's why there's additional cylinders down here. So you change the cylinder, you change the tunes. Gotcha. You can either repeat the tune or you can have it change tunes, mm -hmm. and you'll see the whole cylinder will shift slightly. Oh, so there's multiple songs on each yes. cylinder. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. Six songs on each cylinder. That is so cool. So it shifts little wow. increments. That is amazing. All right, and then to play it. You turn it on. Once it starts to turn on, to stop it, you just push it back, and gotcha. it will know where to stop. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want to stop where the pins are. It wants to stop where it's blank on the cylinder because the pressure of the pins on the comb mm -hmm. will actually bend the pins and bend the comb mm -hmm. if it's sat there for too long. Okay, so that's why they're once they're played, it's got to stop in its mm -hmm. position. So if I pull this back and then I let it go. Does You'll it pull it back, mm -hmm. it'll start to play, then you push it back. And then stop. once the song automatically ends, it will stop. Yeah, it'll cool. stop exactly where it needs to. Gotcha. All right. Cool. So you, you're welcome to play it. All right. So let's hear what this thing sounds like. I'm very excited because I didn't know that it had more than just bells, and I thought it was going to be all bells and like have metal tines and something under it. But it's got an organ and a zither, and I'm very interested to hear what the zither sounds like. So let's test this out. Whoa.
So hopefully you enjoyed this video of this really, really unique music box. I've never seen anything quite like it before, and hopefully you enjoyed it. It's an absolutely beautiful instrument, and it's it's unlike anything I've ever reviewed on my channel. But since it's music-related, and since it is beautiful, very much like pianos and organs can be, I thought it would be a very uh, neat thing to upload, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to go check out my channel, I've got lots of videos on pianos that you can play, and organs that you can play, and all kinds of things. And I've done a few videos on player pianos. I have one of this amazing beast right here. This is a really cool player piano. I've got a video on this as well as a few other awesome things from this shop. So if you're interested in checking out any of that, you might want to go check out my channel. And if you want to subscribe, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. And also if you're interested in where I found this instrument, the information for the store will be in the description of the video. So if you want to come in here and see this for yourself, it works. There's all kinds of other cool player instruments here as well as actual pianos and organs you can play. The guy has like a whole selection of Hammond organs. It's really cool. You can come check out the store if you're in this area. So once again, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.